Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. A lot of you had requested for a video on AWS Well Architected Framework and I was really confused as to how should I make a topic which is mostly a documentation interesting and here it is. So let's start off with AWS Well Architected Framework. This is a very interesting topic, but usually ignored by a lot of students, but we won't do that because it sets a base for you as a developer or even an architect. What I have promised myself is that we will cover each pillar in depth and we'll do a very good hands on demo on this as well. So make sure that you have subscribed because we will be dividing each of these topics to separate videos and I really don't want you to miss out on any one of them. So please make sure that you have subscribed. Having said this, let's listen to a very important message. During these testing times, I request you to please stay at home and stay safe. If you have to step out, please wear a mask, follow social distancing norms, wash your hands and if you feel sick, stay at home and follow proper medication. By following these rules, we can all be on the winning side. This is my humble request. And before moving forward, join me in congratulating our very own Pytholix Hall of Fame members, Sanjeev, Gaurav, Kingshuk and Jonathan. They have successfully completed their Solutions Architect Associate certification. So please put your wishes in the comment section below. And if you also want to be a part of the Hall of Fame members list, please tag Pytholic YT with your certificates on LinkedIn. So please tag Pytholic YT with your certificates on LinkedIn. It really makes me feel very happy and it gives me the motivation to make these videos and it also helps the channel grow. Awesome job guys, keep them coming. As I already told you that we will be discussing each topic in depth and we will be dividing them into separate videos. But that should be a starting point, isn't it? So we will first discuss about well architected framework and what can it help us with and how we can make use of it to make our life easy while designing or delivering products to the world. Yes, these things might feel a bit over the top, but this framework is your handbook if you want to excel in delivering and managing products with AWS. For that, AWS obviously provides us five pillars, just like a house actually needs pillars to make it stable and to withstand any calamity, a strong base and pillar is needed for a product to excel. And the pillars are security, reliability, cost optimization, performance efficiency and operational excellence. And it's not that you can work with only one pillar or two or leave others in the background. You cannot do that. You have to use all of these pillars because you cannot make a house with only one or two pillars. The house will fall, isn't it? Similarly, for your products, you need security so that it should be secure. It should be reliable so that users don't face errors or glitches while using it. The cost should be optimized. Optimization doesn't mean cost cutting or being a miser. It means you need to make an optimal use of the budget so that you have the right balance between the budget and the resource allocation. The performance is important for you and your users. If I ask you what is efficiency, you might tell me that efficiency is the ratio of the useful work performed by your machine or in a process to the total energy expanded or heat taken in. Yes, in the same way, the way you provision features should be efficient with the work done by your developers and it should not have negative impact. The strategy or the business relations or operations are a determining factor for the success of your organization and that is operational excellence and that's also very important. So you see all these factors or pillars are really important. And these terms might be very overwhelming for you right now. But trust me, by the end of these sessions, you'll be through like what they say, hot knife through cold butter, isn't it? <laughs> yes, just like that. So let's see what AWS tells us about the well-architected framework. So AWS well-architected helps cloud architects build secure, high-performing, resilient and efficient infrastructure for their applications and workloads. So by just reading this line, you might be getting all kinds of thoughts. For example, you might be thinking if it helps an architect build secure, high performing, efficient infrastructure for their application and workload, what is this framework? Is it a service by AWS or is it a tool that we must enable or is it a code that we must incorporate so that our infrastructure becomes top quality? 
and yes you might be partially right here it's a tool but most importantly it's a tool that is going to question you and the way you have designed your product or you're going to design your product so if you are an architect or a developer who is designing an application and its infrastructure how are you going to validate that your application or product is in the right direction and whether it will achieve the desired results or not then aws well architect is your answer to that and you might ask how so that's what we will be discussing in this series of videos so make sure that you cover each part carefully and make sure that you don't miss out on any of these sessions for that please make sure that you have subscribed and you have turned on the notification bell icon so in order to make an excellent product you need to have a strong foundation as i already told you and to provide you the strong base for your design aws provides us with five pillars this i have told you three times right now <laughs> so security reliability cost optimization performance efficiency and operational excellence and you must know that a product is built in stages so you have a set of features and you apply a software development model like agile or waterfall or the kind of software development life cycle that you have as per your customer's request similarly aws provides us a consistent approach for the customers and partners to evaluate architectures and implement designs that can scale over time so with growing demand you have to keep making changes but it will surely affect cost security and the more components that are being used it will affect the performance efficiency as well so you have to keep these things in mind so considering these factors aws decided to provide us with a white paper for our reading so that we can take better decisions while scaling or designing the application and with growing popularity among architects this white paper was modeled into a tool called aws well architected tool and you know what it's completely free to use and it's an important aspect of product delivery so remember it's a free tool that you can make use of just go ahead to your aws console right now and type aws well architected tool you will get free access to this of course if you have created your free tier account and these pillars that you see here are on its own right a domain in itself that has to be handled very carefully and it's not that you will value one domain more than others you have to take each of these pillars seriously with utmost importance but how do we validate that how do we know we are in the right track so for that you need to question yourself if your product is good enough can it scale with growing demand or is that a safe product to use but you don't have to do that and the same reason why we have this framework it's very simple on the aws framework tool you just need to answer a set of foundational questions about your application and operation based on the outcome of your answers you learn how well your architecture aligns with cloud best practices and not just that you will also be provided guidance for making improvements isn't that awesome yes it is now that we know why and how we can make use of the aws well architected framework let's talk in brief about each of these pillars so the first pillar is operational excellence in this section we will be getting questions regarding our how our organization works towards the committed goal of having a solid product in place so operational excellence is more like a business mindset than a tool uh, it's like a ideology of your organization to execute its operations in an excellent way so the operational excellence pillar includes how your organization supports your business objectives your ability to run workloads effectively gain insight into their operations continuously improve supporting process and procedures to deliver business value and most importantly there are five design principles for operational excellence so excellence on cloud perform operation on code make frequent but small and reversible changes refine operation procedures frequently that is on timely basis you must always anticipate failures and also you must learn from your operational failures so you must have heard of sigma 6 and smart approaches these are some of the operational excellence benchmarks so next up is security pillar this is a very important aspect based on which the trust factor of your relationship with the user and the customer grows or breaks so keep these points in mind carefully so the security pillar focuses on protecting information and systems 
and confidentiality and integrity of data that is really important whether it may be your own data or your customers data identifying and managing who can do what with privilege management most designs follow least access privileges or RBAC that is your role based access control and you should be able to protect systems and also establish controls to detect security events and there are a few design principles mentioned here to improve your security for your workload the first one that we have here is implement a strong identity foundation so if you have to create a strong identity foundation, you must make changes such as having principle of least privileges or enforcing separation of duties. Having a centralized identity management also helps such as IAM and also you have to make changes to the credentials frequently. The second one that we have here is enable traceability. So having monitoring, logging and event based actions makes it easy to have traceability of errors or data that you might need for analysis or metric collection and to have automated resources or resolutions for your application. So make sure that you have monitoring in place, logging and event based action so that you get to know when there is an error that occurs or you might get the data that you need for your further analysis. Third one that we have here is apply security at all layers. So this is also very interesting because most of us have been doing it. So apply a defense in depth approach with multiple security controls. So whether it may be your instances or VPC or endpoints or load balancer, having security at all levels is important. Next one is automate security best practices. This is quite self-explanatory. Uh, you need to have security best practices in place. It depends on the policies that you have, like using a software-based approach or even version control. The next one that we have here is protect data in transit and at rest. Here you need to identify, obviously, the data that is being stored or is being sent across the internet or the consumers and based on that you need to apply security operations to that so such as it can be encryption or it can be tokenization and even access control where appropriate and last but not the least keep people away from data and prepare for security events so here you should enforce policies that help you to keep important data being modified deleted or created without having a secure policy in place and how do we prepare for security events Obviously, by keeping track of incidents, by having incident management and other measures so that you have accountability in place. Third one that we have here is reliability pillar. So reliability pillar focuses on ensuring a workload performs its intended function. So like having a distributed system design, having a recovery planning or more like disaster recovery plan in place and making sure that you know how to handle changes. Change doesn't mean like climate change. It means more like a change in requirement, budget, security policy, demand of your application and more on these lines. Okay, so change doesn't mean something else. It means change related to your product. Here as well, we have design principles, principles that can help you increase reliability. The first one that we have here is automatically recover from failure. So keep this in mind that no application recovers from failures automatically. There is no magic wand. But there are things that can make your life easier, like having a workload management system and having a key performance indicator or what we also call as KPI monitoring. So these can help you trigger upscaling or downscaling your resources based on the performance and the measurable demands that you have. So reporting. The workload that you are trying to manage is really important. The next one that we have here is test recovery procedures. So reducing risk in your application is very important. And for that, not only you need to test your application, but also have automation to simulate different failures or to recreate scenarios that led to failures before. And having these data or having this data in place actually ensures you that you are in a path of reduced risk. So the next one that we have here is scale horizontally to increase aggregate workload availability. So I'm sure you know what scale horizontal means, but what AWS wants us to do in order to increase aggregate workload is that if you have a large system, please break it down to smaller resources so that you don't have an impact or so that it doesn't get impacted with a single point of failure. We have discussed this in length in the previous sessions as well. So make sure if you have a large system, please break it down to smaller resources so that it doesn't get affected or impacted with single point of failure. The next one that we have here is stop guessing capacity. This is really important. So in case if you have your application running among your team itself, then it's all fine. But in case this application is being used by hundreds of users or thousands of users, you should not do a guesswork 
on your capacity requirement. This happens when demands placed on a workload exceeds the capacity of that particular workload itself. So you haven't expected this amount of workload and it just fills up the resource capacity that you have and thus failure happens. So what AWS tells is, is that you should always optimize demand without over or under provisioning. So if you're running an application and if you have an estimate of around 1000 or 2000 users, don't do a guesswork of how much resource is going to be utilized. You may never know when the demand is going to increase. So make sure that you have provisioning in place such that you're not over provisioning or you're not under provisioning as well. The last one that we have here is manage change and automation. This is the most important thing that I feel right now as a architect or even a developer as well. So here always make changes to your infrastructure using automation like cloud formation, Terraform, whichever one that you want to use, which is subject to review and validation. Because the review and validation for any changes that takes place to your infrastructure is mandatory because this will help you keep track of the changes and its regressions. So make sure that you manage change in automation itself. The next one that we have here is performance efficiency pillar. So performance efficiency in general means how well you can manage or how well you can make use of your resources at hand to get the maximum output or the desired result without having much wastages like cost, time, labor or things which could have an overall impact on the outcome itself. So the performance efficiency pillar focuses on using IT and computing resources effectively or efficiently as you might have already guessed. So selecting the right resource types and the size based on workload requirements like your resources such as your instances, memory, bandwidth, capacity, resource allocation is really important here. And how well you have allocated the resources is the most important thing here. And monitoring performances and making informed decisions to maintain efficiency as business needs evolve. So you have to make decisions based on the demands that you have or if, or if the business needs are evolving, you have to make changes to your environment so that it meets the requirement that you have. So here are some pointers to achieve and maintain efficient workloads in the cloud. So the first one that we have here is make advanced technology implementations easier for your team. So you must understand that as an architect, you must have a certain skill set and your whole team that you have might have certain skill sets they are good at. No one is equal here, isn't it? But certain technologies are not meant to be handled by your team alone. They need the support team to handle the services so that your team can focus on real development and thus making it easy for you to provision resources by taking the help of experts that are meant for it. So remember, don't delegate everything to your team. It's not efficient. People are there, experts are there to do a particular job. Let them do it. The second one that we have here is going global in minutes. With AWS, you can deploy your applications and resources across multiple AWS regions that we all know, ensuring users to have very low latency and have low to zero instability using your applications. So you can go global in minutes. The third one that we have here is use serverless architectures. So with serverless architectures, you remove the need for you to run and maintain physical servers for traditional compute activities. And we have talked extensively about serverless architectures and its advantages, isn't it? So I'm sure you get the point here. Third one that we have here is also very important that is experiment more often. So how do you know that something works or if your idea works or not? Yes, by doing experiments, isn't it? And by using AWS, you can quickly spin up resources as small or as big as you want and within a short span of time. And also, as it has been mentioned here with virtual and automatable resources, you can quickly carry out comparative testing using different type of instances, storage or configuration. So let's suppose you have different set of requirements. You can set up two or three environments and you can have a comparative approach of testing as well. So last one that we have here is consider mechanical sympathy. What AWS tells us is that you should always use the technology approach that best aligns with your goals. I'm reading this once again. What AWS tells us is that you should always use the technology approach that aligns best with your goals, like considering IOPS and access goals while provisioning storage. 
So if you have a requirement of the particular speed or the amount of memory that you need, you should go for a particular technology that actually gives you that support. And last but not the least, cost optimization pillar. So this is important for everyone, even your boss, your organization, your CEO, your CFO, everyone. So the cost optimization pillar focuses on avoiding unnecessary cost. Let's try and understand what are these unwanted costs. So first, you need to have a proper understanding of where the money is being spent. You should select the most appropriate and right number of resource types. And we must implement our products in such a way that they can scale to meet business needs without overspending. Let's see some of the important principles that help us optimize cost in cloud. The first one that we have here is implement cloud financial management. So finance and budgeting is very important for your organization and your products. And for that, the finance and engineering team should work together, should work together to solve costing issues and having resource planning in place. And for the same thing, AWS tells us to have cloud finance management in place, which can help us manage and plan cost for our cloud infrastructure. And with AWS cloud finance management, you get the ability to have cost transparency, control, forecasting and optimization in place for your products. For which you can make use of AWS Cost Explorer, AWS Consolidated Billing, AWS Budgets and tools that are available in AWS. The next one that we have here is adopt a consumption model. So here what AWS tells us is that you should pay only for the computing resources you consume and increase or decrease usage depending on the business requirement. We all know we call about, sorry, we all know about upscaling and downscaling, isn't it? So when you have the demand, make sure that you have automation in place to upscale your resources and similarly downscale them when they are not being used. So based on the testing and regular improvisations that you make, you will know the upscale limit and the downscale limit as well. So the next one that we have here is measure overall efficiency. So as we know, efficiency is measured as the resources expended by the user in relation to the accuracy and completeness of goals achieved. And we need to have instruments in place to measure the business output with the amount of resources that you use to deliver the output that is your cost associated to that. So let's suppose you have 100 users and you have allocated 5 EC2 instances to host your applications. And your users are fine with that. They don't have any measurable lags or issues. What you do is you reduce an instance and make it 4. So now there are 4 EC2 instances rather than 5. But still, your users don't feel the difference in the output as per the requirement. So this is the data that you collected. So now you know you can optimize the cost of the resource allocation without affecting the output of the business that you have. That's how you measure the efficiency. This is a stupidly simple example, but I hope you're getting the point. Next one is stop spending money on undifferentiated heavy lifting. So this is one thing that you should always keep in mind. The heavy lifting that is mentioned here is related to the infrastructure that you have. So why would you want to manage the whole set of data center racks, operating system updates, cable management, and server provisioning, if you can just make use of already existing infrastructure that AWS provides. So stop spending money on these things. Rather spend it on your development effort so that you get a better product. And that's what AWS recommends. And that is why I have told you this. And the last one that we have here is analyze and attribute expenditure. The so cost is important, but to know where the cost is being utilized is even more important. And thus we need to analyze and attribute the expenditure that we have made, isn't it? So how do we do that? With AWS, every resource attribution is very important. You know that you can have tagging in place, like you can provide additional tags to your resources to identify which team the resource belongs to. And based on that, you can find out which team or which business unit is utilizing more of the resources and if they actually need that and based on that analysis you can actually reduce the cost making changes based on that demand and supply. Now let's come back to AWS well architected framework architecture and let's see how we make use of it. So first things first you should always review the current state of your application maybe it be in beta or alpha or even at the golden image state because every level that you have on your product gives you enough information about the state of the application. The first thing, identify the workload to review, for which you have to answer a series of questions about the architecture of your application. For that, we need to make use of the well-architected framework tool. 
here you will get a set of questions related to each of the pillars that we discussed just now and you have to review your answers against the five pillars established by the well-architected framework they are operational excellence security reliability performance efficiency and cost optimization but don't worry about this the questions are not going to be that tough it's going to be simple enough but if you have knowledge on what you're doing right now you should be fairly good with this so it's like more like filling survey and asking to aws please tell me what are the improvements that i can make on my product it's as simple as that aws will ask you a list of questions and you have to answer them so that it can tell you what are the changes or improvements that can be made to the current state of the architecture to have a better understanding you can go through the videos and documentations related to aws best practices so that you can make better design choices so once you have answered all the questions you will be able to generate a report that summarizes the workload review and then you can either view the result of the workload reviews across your organization in a single dashboard or even download the report in a pdf format that's as simple as it gets so i hope it was clear if you want we can reiterate on this once again so the first thing is identify the workload that you have to review so answer a series of questions about the architecture and you have to go to the tool that you have here aws well architected tool and you have to review your answers against the five pillars established by the well architected framework so here on the tool you will be asked a series of questions based on the pillars that you have like operational excellence security reliability performance efficiency cost optimization and based on that you have to see what aws tells us based on the improvements that you need to make and for that if you want you can go through the videos and documentations related to aws best practices to make further improvements and you can have a report that is generated which summarizes the workload review and also you can view the results of the workload across your organization in single dashboard or you can also choose to view it in a pdf format as well i hope it was clear let's move on so that's all for this session but don't think we are done with aws well architected framework we will be discussing each of these pillars in detail in the upcoming sessions so please make sure that you don't miss out on any of these sessions coming up for that if you still haven't subscribed please do it right now and make sure that you have turned on the bell notification icon and if you haven't then you won't get notified for my upcoming videos and it's a loss i would say because these things are really free and uh, you won't be able to see that but having said that please stay safe stay indoors and make sure that you meet me in the next session of aws so until then it's pythonic signing off